In this video, I go over the process of creating a stylized fireplace model using Maya to model ZBrush for sculpting and Substance Painter for texturing. I start first by creating simple shapes which I can place in the scene in order to help with things like proportions and also to get a general idea of what the model will look like and where each piece needs to go. I created a large cylinder which I used in order to guide me in the placement of the rocks. I used a cylinder because I wanted the rocks to create a somewhat circular pattern with their placement. I then utilized the same cylinder in order to create a wooden block which will sit at the base of the fire pit. In this case, I wanted the model to be relatively low poly so I did not add too much geometry to the model and kept things fairly low poly and geometric. The amount of geometry you use on the model really depends on the art style you're trying to achieve as well as the technical constraints. I continued to use cylinders for the remaining wooden posts, keeping those fairly low poly as well. I also created a pot which hangs from the wooden posts in order to add a bit more interest to the model. Notice how I also used cylinders for these pieces as well. This is to give you an idea of the many things you can create by simply using some of the polygon primitives that come with your 3D program. Everything that I did in this video can be done with almost any 3D program as the tools are usually the same, especially when it comes to the more basic and standard tools which I used in this video. The last thing I wanted to add was something to the inside of the pot. For this I duplicated one of the rocks in enabled subdivision mode and moved some of the vertices around as well as added more geometry by using the extrude tool. Finally, I deleted the bottom sections of the rocks as this will not be seen and I also cleaned up and reduced the geometry on the section which goes inside the pot. For the UVs, I decided to have some of the model pieces share the same UVs or texture space, so I deleted some of the posts and later make duplicates once I'm done creating UVs. For UVs, I typically like to apply a planar map to the model in order to reset the UVs and then select edges and make cuts to the model. After that I used the unfold tool and later the orient shells and layout option as well. I did this for every piece of the model until I was done creating UVs for each piece. The process of creating UVs becomes easier the more objects you get to UV as you learn 3D and continue to learn more about the 3D modeling process. Once I got all the UV shells ready, the final step was to pack the UVs manually. You can always just use the automatic packing tool, but I typically find that I get better results by just packing things myself. With the UVs done, I duplicated parts of the model and offset the UVs by one. The reason I offset the UVs for the duplicates is because I sometimes get errors when I try to bake maps in Substance Painter while having overlapping UVs. Next, I grouped the objects and renamed them while also adding the suffix underscore low. In this case, I used a script for naming which you can find in the video description or you can also manually name your models as well. I also used an auto smoothing groups script which sets the normals for the model in a correct way. I exported the low poly model and then made a duplicate of the group. I also added supporting edges to some sections by using bevels. I do this to make it easier to work with in ZBrush once I'm at the stage of subdividing the model. Keep in mind you can also do this in ZBrush by using the ZModeler tools. In ZBrush I use the Import FBX option which is found under the Z plugin menu. I subdivide my models and also use DynaMesh to add more geometry. In this case, I found that it was easier to add some details by using some of my stylized brushes and also the orb stylized brushes. Using these brushes made it a lot easier to add details. One thing to keep in mind when using brushes like these 
is that sometimes this can make your model look less unique. So I typically recommend, in addition to using brushes like these, to also add details manually as well. Once I was done sculpting, I exported the high poly and imported the low poly into Substance Painter where I baked all my maps. I also made sure to change the bake settings to use bake by mesh name. This is a setting you want to use when you don't want different models to bake artifacts with each other and want Substance to bake them as separate objects. With all my bakes ready, I proceeded to use the 3DX stylized smart material which you can find in the video description. In this case, I am using the latest iteration of the material being the 2.3 version. If you don't have this version, I would highly recommend you visit the Gumroad or ArtStation page where you first got it and make sure to download the latest update. For the textures, I separated the model into different sections for the wood, rocks, the pot and the liquid. I changed the colors and different parameters until I got the results I was looking for. So this was a short breakdown on how I went about creating and texturing this model. If you want to see the full video, you can always become a Patreon or subscribe to the premium page at 3dx.net. Just keep in mind most videos are not narrated. If you liked this video, I invite you to take a look at this other video where I show a cool technique on how to use deformers in your modeling process.